Hey guys, welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and to my right... Oh, I thought you were going to... I'm Josh. Yeah. I'm Josh Cook. Yeah, he's uh, joining me uh, on a more permanent basis as my uh, m- uh, music master. Yeah. Yep. Co-music host master. Yes. We'll f- f- think of a title, <laughs> title later. <laughs> Um, it, so we got a lot of stuff today. I'm going to talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. I got a highlight clip from last Saturday's of uh, Dude I Just Drew episode seven. You can check that out online. I got to look up is Dude I Just Drew. Um, I also have uh, some new programs that are in this weekend, it, which involves global public health. I think um, I think we're doing a bunch of other programs as well. Poetry Out Loud, Hellgate High School's Poetry Out Loud is airing on MCAT this weekend as well. Uh, Ballet Beyond Borders. Well, you see all that more later bit later in the show. But let's talk a little bit about weather. Yesterday, it got as hot as 40 degrees, and we will get a chance to see it by next week as weather just gets warmer and warmer because this morning uh, – there's puddles, so you might want to watch out for some of those puddles out there because all that snow is melting, especially at the burns. So it is currently 12 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 31 degrees. Your low is going to be 12. You have a 50% chance of snow. So it usually it's like when it's above like 40%, it usually means it's going to snow at some point. But this doesn't mean it's going to snow that much. But of course, Saturday is going to be sunny, clear, um, which means a lot of the uh, warm temperatures won't stay here as much. But it will be warmer during the day, uh, the sunny parts of the day this weekend as well. So those are your weather and some news. There's a lot of news happening around here. Uh, one of the biggest things happening here is that the... Uh, the uh, Montana street trial, as it's been coined, with, you know, those two uh, people who murdered uh, the, um, uh, let's see, they murdered, um, they murdered and dismembered the 24-year-old uh, Jackson Wills, the 15-year-old uh, Marilyn Pickett, uh, Tiffany Pierce, and Augusta Standing Rock, uh, both pled guilty, and of course, Tiffany Pierce, just this yesterday morning during the court hearing, pled guilty to those crimes. Her plea agreement calls for a life in prison, uh, in prison with no restriction to her, her eligibility to seek parole. Her co-defendant in the case, Augusta Standing Rock, pled guilty in December. His plea arrange, uh, agreement rec- recommends a life sentence with which he is eligible for parole. What started as a rocky start to their incarceration came to an end, and sentencing will take place later on. Um, Pickett's attorney hopes to seek up to 30 years with a chance of parole, but if she does get out, she'll be 53 years old. In state news, MSU, um, they had a roof collapse in one of their older gyms on the South Gym. The Bozeman Fire Department says firefighters were called around 2.20 a.m. Thursday morning and found a partial roof collapse on the backside of an unoccupied building. The flat roof of the South Gym at Montana State University's PE complex collapsed earlier uh, yesterday morning, injuring no one but shocking people on campus as they went to school. This is kind of like, you know, like it's the Schreiber's Gym, you know, like Schreiber's Gym at the University of Montana. It does get used, but it's not like the big use. Yeah. It doesn't have bleachers in there, so they, 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 it's for playing basketball and not so much watching basketball. And then even bigger news, the Berkeley Pit. They're looking to drain the Berkeley Pit and then um, discharging the uh, filtered water into the Swan River. Um, wait, wait, which one was it again? Let me just double check. It was the uh, Silver Bow Creek. My bad. So, so for the first time in 30 years, the pit will, won't be rising. The water level uh, in the pit won't be rising, according to Mark Thomas of Montana Resources. This will stop the pit water from rising to a critical water level, which is 60 feet at that time. The project has been, com- uh, we had um, um, preparations to be completed by 2023, but the plant had an early start on this. Much of the pit's water will be treated at the Horseshoe Bend plant and used at the mine. Um, <coughs> the rest will continue to the new polishing plant. After that, they'll send the water right down to the water line, head west, and then discharge in the Silver Bow Creek. The clean stuff, that is. So that's kind of what's happening there. So the Berkeley Pit, which is synonymous with pretty much most of our lives, yeah. uh, it's like, oh yeah, the Berkeley Pit, everyone knows about it, uh, get to the point where it becomes a, its own tourist attraction of an ecological disaster. Gross. Yep. So anyways, here's some uh, national news. Uh, the Homeland Security uh, went to uh, Washington recently and came out to support Trump's national security declaration. Of course, lots of news has been reporting a record number of people in the last month in the last 10 years have been crossing the border. So just in the last month, there was a record number of 60, 60, I mean 76,000 people crossing illegally and more than 20,000 family members per month. Um, many border officials say that they're pulling resources tr- for transporting these folks, most of these folks who cross illegally, either under the fence, over the fence, or uh, gaps, um, have given themselves up to uh, Homeland Security. And uh, a lot of times, um, 
during the administration, during uh, her, uh, the visit to the White House, um, let's see, Homeland Security uh, Director uh, Kirsten uh, Nelson was on Capitol Hill making the case for lawmakers. Many Democrats who control the House now grilled Nelson asking her or telling her that the separating kids from their families, even for a little while, would cause severe damage to their psyche via uh, severe separation anxiety. So those are some of the things that are happening in the news. Here's a couple new programs, and then when I come back, and when, when we come back, sorry, I'm so used to being alone. No, it's okay, I understand. We're going to be talking about some movies that are coming out this weekend, and I'm going to basically prejudge them without any kind of context. So Dude, I do that all the time. I know, right? I'm good at it. Well, stay tuned right after this. What is the Peace Corps? Basically, it's this. I put this on the screen up here. Uh, this is what I tell people when they ask me what the Peace Corps is. The Peace Corps is basically a federal agency of the United States, an independent agency of the United States government that will send you outside the United States for a period of two years to work as a volunteer in a community that needs your talents and skills. Um, that actually did not come from any uh, website. It's not from any book or anything. That's how I explain it. I like to put it in those terms for a couple of reasons. First of all, we're talking about an independent agency. It's not attached to any other department. Funded on its own, it doesn't answer to anybody, but it does have special connections to the State Department. That's kind of important, especially to me. I submit to you it doesn't matter, unless you're in research and then, you know, publish or perish kind of a thing. The notion here is simply this. Arthur Carhart couldn't have made happen what Aldo Leopold made happen. And if Arthur Carhart hadn't have shared his idea with managing lands in a natural state, if he hadn't have reached out with help from his, um, his, his boss, who knows how long it would have taken before we would have had wilderness codified, you guys. So the notion here is you've got to know your tribe. You've got to find your tribe, and you've got to spend time with your tribe, and you've got to work with them, and you've got to not be afraid to share your brilliant idea, especially if you don't have the skill and the network and the ability to make it happen. I fall in that category. I have brilliant ideas, like, all the time. <laughs> all the time. But that doesn't mean I can implement them. It doesn't mean they should be implemented. So you surround yourself with people who can, who can either say, that's a brilliant idea, the time is not now, or that idea is really stupid, or that is a good idea, let's see what we can do to make it happen. This just in. Um, there's a moose outsider over there. Uh, right <laughs> it's outside the well, it's uh, off of a uh, pine um, near the post office. There's a moose and her calf. So uh, you're directed to stay away because you know you never want to be anywhere near a mother and their calf because they will attack. Yeah. And moose are known to be pretty uh, territorial. Yeah, but it's, they're here. I don't know. It just happened to be here. I, you'll hear about it, but it's, since it's so breaking, I'm not going to run out there and get a quick shot of it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just just want to let you guys know. It's, it's I a moose. Risk it. Yeah, Lori just told me. Uh, she, yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Lori. But yeah, moose. 
watch out. Fun. <laughs> or, you know, if you if you can see the moose, just stay in your car and just watch the moose and be like, oh, that's cool. And yeah. that's pretty much it. But get a, get a Snapchat or something. Yeah, you know? yeah. I don't know if you should roll down your window because that would just like, mm. you're sticking your hands out the window, the moose would be like, you're going to get got. All right. Yeah. So you know what else is going to get got uh, this weekend? Uh, the new uh, uh, Marvel's um, uh, Shazam. Um, it's uh, Captain... Uh, <laughs> Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Hold we're still getting used to it. Uh, okay, we're, st we're still uh, dusting off the uh, other peoples in the in the in the room. So, anyways, uh, coming to a theater and a troll's um, complaint page near you. Captain Marvel has everything from cats to Top Gun references to female empowerment. Not to get into the DC Captain Marvel that has quite a bit of a hard time figuring out the name of their superhero besides Shazam, Captain Thunder, blah blah blah. So, anyways, this is a girl. Uh, who uh, doesn't know who she is because she was brainwashed by aliens and basically kind of turned into like a space cop yeah. and then blah, blah, blah. And anyways, watch an ode to the 90s, you know, where Bill Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> I, and then up next, I, I, um, we got The Kid. Yeah. Um, you remember Billy the Kid, right? No. Well, you should. Uh, well, you're in a treat as yet another movie that glorifies outlaws. This movie stars the unbalanced kid from Chronicle and the uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2 movie. Um, I, can't, I, I could probably look up his name, but I won't. But who is being hunted by a man with a domestic violence issue while at the same time walking the tightrope from the, the law. So he's an outlaw, but he's also a guy who's kind of going after a guy or who whose girl is abused by this guy. And he's like... I'm Billy the Kid. I'm an outlaw, but you're even worse than me. Yeah, he he's kind of an anti-hero. Yeah. Like, uh, but he never was. He was always a jerk, and he was trigger happy. And anyone would ever be like, "You're not as good as you think you are." Bang! He just shoot him. Yeah. That's well, that's that, Billy that the Kid. He was. Whole, whole so that was kind of like the whole thing. thing. But anyways, you get to see a glorified movie about outlaws and whatnot. So. so. Uh, and so this movie will probably end at the point where the, co where the like the law man's just like, "You did good, Billy the Kid, yeah. but you're still an outlaw." And then like, I'll give you ten minute head start, and then the chase, and then that's how they kind of end the movie. I think that's how they end the movie. Honestly, yeah, that seems, uh, especially if it's like a retelling of an old story. I feel like that's yeah. how they're gonna tell it. Or it's the one that he dies because I'm pretty uh, at one at one point where Either like he, he he's like in a house, and then like he gets shot by like like the whole bunch of vigilantes come together and hunt him down and that yeah. kind of deal. Not like, you know, Robert Ford and Jesse James. Yeah. Which is another good movie with Brad Pitt and um Casey Affleck. But anyways, up next we got a movie that will probably not come out in Missoula, but it's still coming out this weekend. It is uh Gloria Bell. Every once in a while, there is a indie film that comes out of Sundance where they have no idea what to p who to put in it, which so they usually go for uh, insert here. Julian, I deserve better. More stars as a single 50-year-old on the hunt for some young blood. She's not a vampire, just a free spirit. You know those uh, those girls at the bar, and they're dancing to the music, but they have like wife beater, but they have a really long dress, but they only dance with their hips. That's basically it. I've never been in a club, Scott, you know, and I think you know that. That's, uh, but if you've ever seen those girls, those are exactly the kind of girl that this movie is probably about, that I'm prejudging whether or not it needs it or not. Anyways, uh, anyways, this movie's called Glory Bell, and it might come out in Missoula. It might be at the Roxy. So Probably at the Roxy, yeah. yeah. And that concludes your pre-critic. So did you want to talk a little bit more about movies, or did you want to oh, just... Well, um, the only one that I know anything about is Captain Marvel. Um, cause I'm, I'm kind of a Marvel nerd myself. Yeah. I'm not like super into the comics, but like. Cause she only started being uh, Captain Marvel in the 2000s. Yeah. She's so, always Ms. Yeah. Marvel. So it like takes place basically before most of what we know of like the Avengers and stuff, you know, in the nineties. Yep. Um, so we'll see like, you know, uh, a young Samuel Jackson probably being, uh, Nick Fury. Um, we'll see, um, there's. So there's like the aliens, the Kree, that basically like take in uh, Captain Marvel and make her the space cop, you know? Yeah. The Nova Corps, which we saw in Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, and then there's the Skrull, which are like these shapeshifters. So basically it's going to be a movie of like which Marvel superhero was the shapeshifting alien the whole time. Oh, is that what they're trying to allude to? Maybe. I don't know. I don't think it's, it's a big I think maybe, that's like I a think. big speculation like yeah. cuz they just introduce the characters. Yeah. A lot of times a lot of times it's like when you make a movie and th these kind of movies are just like oh you have to uh, once you try this you have to try that. 
And it doesn't yeah. make any sense unless you know this from that. It's it, like you have to be watch. It's definitely interesting because they, they've set up this whole universe of like timelines and yeah. stuff. Um, so it'll be interesting how they weave the 90s into that. Um, but, oh, also, there's a new trailer out for the new Spider Man movie. You should check that out. Yeah. Pretty sick. You got Jake Gyllenhaal, Donnie Darko as uh, Mysterio. As Mysterio, the goldfish bowl man. Yep. And they kept the goldfish bowl. Yeah, I, I was really happy about that. All right, so this concludes everything you need to know about movies that are coming out this weekend. We'll talk more about Pre-Critic next Friday. All right, so let's talk. Uh, let's throw it over to Dude, I Just Drew. Uh, last weekend we did a Dude, I Just Drew. Uh, it was episode seven. Here is the highlights from that video. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Dude, I Just Drew with a very special guest. Uh, you know. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nan. And um, so, Nan, since this is your first time on the show, and for everybody who's on the first time on the show, or if you've watched the show, uh, we're going to be talking about the rules. One, uh, each person gets a five minute time limit to draw. Two, uh, we're flip a coin to see who goes first. Three, uh, we're going to name, going to draw any suggestions from the hat that our buddy over here is, uh, you know, wearing right now. And uh, four, have fun. I think I think that's another one. I don't know. Superhero ju junction. There it is. Superheroes doing what superheroes do. They're stuck in a junction. All right, now you switch places. Junction. All right. Cool. Junction that is all hold on. The sky. Like. Anyways, they're pulling this uh, center of void. Right. We have a Patreon apparently. I didn't, I didn't even know that. Hey, we do Patreon. Well, what's a Patreon? A Patreon. Uh, well, a Patreon. A Patreon. A Paterion? Paterion? Is it the Incredibile or the Accredit Car? Incredibile. I like Incredit. Rip. I think that's what we call it the second movie. Yeah, I think so. It's the Incredit Car! That's the old school meme known as Trollface. Trollface? That's a lot epic. Oh! oh <laughs> Trollface! Did somebody uh, suggest that? Or? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the yeah, we got, we, got a, oh, yeah. we got a shout out. From Awesome X10. Awesome X10. Thank oh, you. another one, Awesome X10. Thank you, Awesome X10, for coming for for doing another one. Uh, <laughs> ah. Times ten. Times ten. Do you understand my pain? Anyone oh, yeah. here? Do you understand my pain? Do you understand my pain? I'm disappointed. Hey, you won six times. Shut up. Wow. <laughs> Shut up. That's, <laughs> why, that's why I like to. Right here, have a good time doing ruining it. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Uh, Yikes. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you said that mine dropped. Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> the little guy trying to tackle it. Dog! Oh, little man right there. Small he's hugging me. <laughs> it's the fatal half inch. It's, it's a, it's a slight levitation on the floor. <laughs> oh. it's slight, slight crack, you know, like. Is that like an octopus? No. No, it's an inchworm. Oh, okay, I can't. It's the fatal half-inch It looks like it's like, it's like, it's a tentacle. It looks like it could be a tentacle. It looks like he's gonna be like... But not only that. <laughs> he's, he's inside the fatal half-inch. <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> so the deadly, the fatal half-inch. Oh, my God, that's amazing. <laughs> I turned around for a second, I turned back around, and I'm like, ruler. The fatal inch, half inch is a Swiss Army knife, basically. It's a Swiss Army knife ruler. Oh. Uh, thanks for coming by, Nan. It was good yeah. to have you on. Even it was though fun. everybody else talked about things. What? <laughs> kill you, I'll kill you all. Um, hey, University College Campus kid is on our... Yeah, anybody who's on the university, please come on if you want to. Um, remember, you can find us on YouTube, Facebook. You can find me on my social medias. Where can we find you? Do you have, do you have anything? Not really. Okay. Um, <laughs> don't add don't, me. Don't, also, don't forget to check out Patreon page if you want to. And um, we'll see you next episode. I'm on t shirts. Like, like after I support. So, so why wouldn't you just buy t shirts? Why would I do that when I can support them on Patreon for $15 a month? Right, everybody watching that's not watching? <laughs> Oh, we got our 
Because he's people. No. Hey, welcome back. And that was a uh, that was dude. I just drew highlights from episode seven. You can check it out by logging on to uh, or googling dude. I just drew, and you can find it on YouTube, Facebook, and beyond. <coughs> oh, I got to I had to hold that cough for that last uh, little stint. Um, just so you guys know, just so. You <laughs> Uh, just like angry for no reason. <laughs> What'd you say? Bless up. Okay. Anyways, I, I want to uh, remind you guys, just before we go into city council report, I wanted to mention that MCAT is doing some tours. So if you have a group that wants to come by and do uh, tours here at MCAT, you can sign up by logging on to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your local resource for everything Missoula. Um, if you're interested in finding out more about us, you can go here. But if you want to find out more about Wake Up Missoula, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made you write it out twice, and I'm too cheap to buy the rights to wakeupmissoula.com. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, so yeah, let's talk about some city council. The big thing that's happening is the uh, Hillview uh, Street crossing. So they're trying to build a bunch of new uh, units, a uh, bunch of townhouse exemption project over there. It's running into a couple uh, snags. But let's kind of get, let's uh, backtrack and just talk a little bit more about this. So this is the Hillview, Hillview Way, hopes to build over 68 new units under the townhouse exemption. Townhouse has been what the city of Missoula has been approving to keep up with the growth of the Missoula's population. So far, they uh, are lo looking to finalize this deal since it's going to be a big undertaking because it involves in infrastructure improvement and extensions. So Mary McRae um, from Developmental Services talks about traffic concerns in these particular areas as we uh, add more houses means more cars. Hillview Way is designed for 10,000 trips per day. The current trips per day are around 5,000, and engineering does not have concern with the additional. Typically, a dwelling unit is calculated in the ITE manual as having 8 to 10 trips per day, so 68 units would add an additional. 680 trips per day since that's well under the 10,000 the road was designed for engineering does not have a concern with those trips and that the location all right so that's mary mccray and problem solved no worries about the uh, uh intense amount the uh, the amount of traffic one of the things that uh um about construction is about like your, your geotech so a geotech is basically just uh to uh, moderate the land determine whether or not it's you're able to build on it, you know, foundation-wise, stormwater. There's just a whole bunch of things they have to do because this is a lot of, like, basically virgin empty land that's up on a hill. So there's a lot that has to be done, and the city has to get a lot of approval. So uh, Jason Rice, he's from Landworks, who's in the process. Uh, he's the one who's kind of um, moving the construction process forward. And he talks about construction and um, waiting for the geotech report. And this is what he had to say. If you make a condition that says update the sort you know the, the geotech report for these issues it stands the test of time if if the economy shifts and this project doesn't get done in five years they've got to get another updated geotech report and it's you know it's handled it's it um it doesn't put us into a catch-22 um we're real and that's what i tried to say last time is you're relying on professionals which troy said it, you know well you know with their licensure their insurance their eno you know all the pieces and the geotech report includes on-site inspections to make sure it's done right um uh, you know, to me, that's why you push more to put it in as a condition that covers your concerns, because you've got very qualified staff to review it. If this was in a subdivision, um, it wouldn't be part of the public hearing process. It would be a condition of final approval that a geotech report is completed and reviewed, and the same with the stormwater. It wouldn't be done at this level, even in a subdivision. All right, so that was Jason Rice. Um, um voice in his concern and in, in his opinions on this as well. The plan is not to build all these units all at once, but to create them in phases. And the amount of time required for the completion of this project is up to five years. And the geotech survey has to be done every five years. So they're trying to determine about, like, they want to have one geotech survey for the whole entire duration of the project. So they're trying to figure out a way to kind of streamline this. John Debari from City Council. Uh, is wasn't too happy about uh, the comments made by Jason Rice. The whole review of this has happened in 
lots of small pieces. And I'm trying to figure out a way that when we're done with this conversation and we're actually willing, you know, willing to bring it back to uh, council and have a final decision on it, that there's a clear path forward. And the way I'm envisioning this, the clearest path forward would be to have all the information available to us at the time of decision, all of the information regarding these items, uh, or which in my mind are all linked, so that uh, we address the concerns of, of staff, we address the concerns of the folks in the public, we address our own concerns, and the applicant is able to put their best foot forward in terms of having us make a decision. So I think for me at this point, you know, I, I, Troy says he's not a geotechnical engineer. I'm not an engineer at all. And th all of this stuff flows together in my mind. And in fact, if you want to go back to some of our earlier conversation around maintenance, I think understanding, for instance, what the um, stormwater plan is helps us also understand what the cost for maintenance is. And so uh, it's, it, it's starting to become a little bit circular. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way where when it comes time for us to make a decision that it's more linear. Mr. Von Lossberg. All right. So that was uh, some of John DeBarry's concerns about that. Um, Jason Rice uh, um, is at a uh, very much uh, help me help you kind of situation because he doesn't know exactly how much information that the city needs and it's kind of unclear uh, about how he what he has to do to move things forward. And this is what he had to say. In the very beginning, we asked to put in the, how did this TED thing come to, to be? You know, it's a conditional use permit. That's the decision that the city you know, made. And so we're looking at what conditions can you put on this project that will ensure that it'll move forward fine. We could, in today's zoning, come in and have proposed this as a condominium project with 34 duplexes, and there would be no public process to my knowledge. It would be a building permit process. The TED process is what brings us here before you today, which that got coupled with a conditional use permit. So my thought was, as we get these great concerns by having a public process, we develop conditions to mitigate those. So if whether we do the geotech report now or later, it's a matter of time. So you're talking about we have very favorable, you know, cost of construction this year. So far, it's been good. Um, what's this do to project and affordability of housing in Missoula? I mean, no one has claimed that this is an affordable project, but its attainability of housing requires a full spectrum. So you're pushing the time frame out. Uh, All right. So this is that was uh, Jason Rice uh, saying that uh, the addi this additional process isn't necessarily helping. Rice continue to say that they need more information to respond to concerns of the city council and the area and how they can move forward and where they need to start this process moving forward. So John Dabari responds to this. It's been a lot of time to get where we have so far and it, the way it's going, it looks like it's going to take more time. I think you have to give us the benefit of the doubt to understand what is being asked of us and what's being asked of the community and the public. And uh, at this point, we're methodically going through all the issues that we think are germane to approving the project. And, sure. if, and if you don't want us to go there, that's fine. We'll just stop right now. No. All right. So that was uh, John DeBarry's response uh, to uh, Jason Rice's comments. Um, so far, uh, uh, the next 45 minutes of the city council looked into stormwater treatment and flood uh, water plan plans. Um, and of course, you know, there is a lot to do. Uh, Hill Hillview Crossing is a tricky trickster. Uh, Troy Monroe, the city engineer, reflects on the current uh, uh, structure of the stormwater drainage in the Hillview Way, because this is basically kind of like the, a bunch of new construction on the hill just as you're going up Russell Street. You know, like Russell yeah. as it turns into Hillview Way, Southwest Higgins crosses there past the Albertsons. It's that weird road that they had to do. Uh, the city had to do a major undertaking to kind of uh, adjust the curve so it doesn't have like a drop off and people won't slide into oncoming traffic. Yeah, which is a good plan. Yep. So one of the things is they did an SID, which is a special improvement district back in the day. And this is just a little context in the background. And people who live in the area have to pay taxes. But the landowners, they came forward and saying that they don't have to, they, they feel as though they shouldn't have to pay taxes for lands they, that they're not using. So they made a deal saying that if they do develop like they're doing right now, they will have to pay the taxes on the land after the fact. So that's just a little bit of background of, about the 
complicated area up the Hillview uh, cross <laughs> crossing for sure. So here's Tro Troy Monroe, and he talks a little bit more about stormwater drainage and about the system that's in place that is very, uh, there's really no one to talk to about who um, installed it back in the early 2000s. So this is what he had to say. Designed by WGM Group. Uh, it was done back at, in the late 90s, uh, early 2000s. We couldn't find anyone who's worked on it, who's still at WGM. So we were going off of what we could read from the report and what the, those who are still at, who, who knew something about it. Um, what we were told was that it was designed to um, pass the same storm that occurred after Mount St. Helens eruption, which was a 2.58 inch 24 hour event. Uh, what we had looked at was the most recent, um, within the report, what would be the drainage from this development, the route it took through Honeysuckle Gulch all the way out to South Reserve Street where it, it gets into a very large system. Um, we used the most recent USGS um, floodplain maps, which I would hope would um, have information from the 1997 events, but we took that elevation and then we that's in Wapakia Park, and we ensured that nothing from this development would um, raise that 100-year flood event. All right, so that was uh, Troy Monroe uh, um, telling uh, folks at home that this is not going to affect the fl floodplain, and there will be no flooding from the additional uh, construction that will be happening there. And you know, the ability to have the uh, easy storm runoff is important as well. All right, so not much information from previous folks who installed the storm uh, water draining system, WGM Group. Uh, Ted Nugent, he talks about liability on, uh, on the city if they were to approve this project too soon. Um, so this is what Ted Nugent had to say. But with respect to the city, if he's concerned about the city, any claimant has the burden of proving negligence on the part of the city. Uh, our liability insurance is only triggered if there's a proof of negligence on our part. And so that negligence wouldn't be speculation. That negligence would have to be backed by some expert witnesses and testimony showing that whatever the review was, you were negligent in performing your review or in approving the construction, depending what part of the project we were talking about. That all right, so that was Ted Nugent reflected on this. So the city is have, ha, ha, having to get all the information that they need to get to approve this project. Um, there's a lot of risk in this project because if you really think about it, you build it on a hill and a lot of times when you build on a hill, you got to think about the foundation and most hills, if you build on soft soil, there's a chance that yeah. You have a little bit of that landslide going on there. So the Geotech Survey will be going forward. They'll be looking at it at this point, and then they'll determine whether or not how far they want to move forward on this 68-unit uh, project, which will be made in phases. So these are all townhouses. They'll be built Hillview Way. Uh, but right now, it's all in the talking phases, and that's kind of what's going on there. So if you want to find out more information about your city government and see what's going on there, you can go to their website at ci.missoula.mt.us. All right, do you want to do a thing before we uh, throw it on over to uh, an art clip? Because i got a brand new art clip from the Clay Studio. Do you want to? Oh, what kind of thing? I don't know, piano thing? Okay. Yeah, let's throw it to you. So here uh, is Josh Cook. All right. Um... Got any requests? Shenandoah? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you say? Uh, Shenandoah. What, what's that? Oh, Shenandoah. I don't know that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I know that. that. I, I kind of threw you a curveball on that one.
That was a little, I, uh... Hello there. Now it's time for a little bit of uh, uh, things that are happening. Of course, today most of the kids get the day off from school. So MCT, um, YMCA, and many other places are doing um, uh, day off camps. Um, if you're interested in learning more about those, they're going on right now, pretty much. So I want to get—I'll give you a kind of a brief overview of some of the things. So school's out. They got Parks and Rec camp. I think they have that one starting at 11. You can check that out. Uh, YMCA and MCT play in a day camp is happening all day today for some of those kids that you can't necessarily look after on their day off because it's uh, parent-teacher conferences this week. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So they had a half day yesterday, and you know, I don't know. I don't get it because. Me personally, like when I had parent-teacher conferences, we never had the day off from school. Like I don't remember having so many PIR days. Me either. My parents were always there. My parents were my teachers, <laughs> so it was always a conference of some kind. Right. <laughs> they had the dinner table. It's just like, uh, what were you thinking on this uh, report on um, Montana <laughs> um, history? All right, anyways, so let's get into it. Um, indoor fun, Mismo uh, Gymnastics, uh, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, and of course, Roots Acre Sports Center. These are just fun indoor activity time to deals. Um, it's gonna be sunny this weekend, so you might wanna check out some of the slopes if you guys plan on going outside and about. But if you wanted to stay in, those are some of the options you guys can do. Um, if, you're, uh, if you want your kid to uh, do some books, um, <laughs> I know, do some yeah. books. Uh, pick up a book. Pick up a book. Like, get better at grammar. Better quick. than me. Um, <laughs> I'm 30. Um, <laughs> Missoula Public <laughs> Library is doing Tiny Tales and Story Time at 10:30 a.m. They say toddlers and young kids learn nine new words a day, and Ooh. they they're to help. So hands-on oh, science, uh, the science of spin, uh, at Spectrum <laughs> Discovery Center, open for visitors of all ages, and they're talking about spinning tops. So it's the um, science of spin with everything from a mythical spinning chair to creating your own spinning top. You know, like the whole concept of like using a ventri ventri ventrifical force, you know, when you like... <laughs> centripetal centri force. Centri typical force. Oh, wait, I forget the difference between centrifugal and centri It's like the whole idea when you're spinning around in a circle and you like reach out your arms and then hold yeah, it tight yeah. together, kind of like when you're on those spinny things. Yeah. You'll learn all about the spinning. That was one of my favorite and subjects as a child. Yeah. Spinning. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of <laughs> stuff with tops and stuff. But if you're not too interested in spinning, you guys can do a little bit of yarns and watercolor. Um, that's going to be the Missoula Public Library. They do it every single Friday, and this is at noon. It's basically if you're interested in crochet and making your own clothes, or you just want to do some watercolor with Rob P. at the Missoula Public Library. <laughs> I know. I, I remember all these events because they're usually ongoing and they happen all the time. Endeavor, uh, this is like a, uh, I call this the, it's kind of like the homeschool co-op here in Missoula, Montana, where well, a bunch of parents come together and create their own school for the kids and have a, a shared learning environment. So anyways, this is a uh, board game day. They usually do things on uh, Fridays. They also have a, their own Lego club. But they do require that all children must be accompanied by an adult, and this is not a drop-off event. And this happens from 1.30 to 2.30, and this is on 1905 West Sussex Avenue. Family fun time at the YMCA. 
Friday nights, uh, Friday afternoons, right after school, usually from 3.30 to 5 YMCA, host a family-friendly, uh, family fun time at the YMCA. Yeah. And there's always fun. Um, Women's Law Caucus 22nd Annual Silent Auction. This is part of the public house, and they're going to uh, try to raise money to uh, for the YWCA Pathways Domestic Violence Program, and this is part of the Alexander Blewett the Third School of Law at the University of Montana, and they, this is their 22nd annual silent auction. Word to the woman, um, free cycles. Word to the woman is an International Women's Day fundraiser benefiting the critical programs at Word, featuring an open mic and music by West Fork Music, Junior, Arrowleaf, and O Rose. Food by, for purchase by the Empanada Joint Food Truck, and it's a $5 suggested donation to get in. Planetarium Show with Chris uh, Totsar. Um, University of Montana is doing their planetary shows tonight. It must be a clear night, uh, so it's going to happen at 6. And if you miss it, they'll do it again at 7.30, and it's going to happen tonight. There's the, uh, of course, MCT. I, I talked about it on Wednesday. Um, they just uh, started their, MC, uh, their MCTs, the 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, which is adults playing uh, young children in a play about the spelling bee. And there yeah, you go. Yeah, it's a comedy, and it's very good. Yep, it's PG-13, so you want, might want to uh, think about who uh, goes to the show, because it's a little more highbrow humor. Yeah. yeah All right. Definitely. So uh, I do want to show another art clip for you guys, because I usually do it in between uh, events to kind of give you guys a break from me talking constantly. Um, but here is an uh, art clip that will – basically, this is the last time I'll be able to show this art clip for today, because it ends this weekend. So if you guys get a chance, go to the Zach and can check out some of this art. And then when I come back, I'm gonna talk about some Saturday and Sunday stuff. You're gonna like Sunday's event. Oh yeah. Wait for it. A lot of good um, art from the Z uh, Zootown Arts Community Center. They'll be open until about 5 or 6 tonight. Um, you can check that out um, anytime, but it'll end this weekend. Um, let's talk about some Saturday stuff. So if you're interested in, um, if, you, if you love the farmer's market and you love just like being able to like go all these vendors, see a bunch of familiar faces, Winter Market is still being hosted at the Missoula Senior Center from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Orchard Homes, uh, they lied. Uh, to me, uh, because they uh, they said that they're gonna it was like a one month only deal in February, but they're doing a winter market at Orchard Homes Winter Market is gonna be going all throughout March, and I assume it's gonna probably go out through the next month. But it's their March um, Orchard Home Winter Market, and you know it's the barn off of Reserve Street. Sick. Yep, that's where they do it. It's really cool. It's a really nice barn. It's like solar powered and everything. Mm -hmm. If you get a chance to totally check it out, it's right behind behind Natural Grocers. Fermentation workshop, oh. so Missoula County Extension Conference Room, Kitchen Kraut Come, oh, yeah, that's how it says, Come Explore the Ancient Art of Fermentation, a form of nutritious and natural uh, pr preservation. This hands-on workshop, instructed by Kay uh, uh, Kaylee Hansel, includes the tools and supplies to make and take home tasty kraut with carrots. Uh, you can call uh, at 258-4206. Again, that number is 258 Four two zero six. It's twenty dollar registration fee. It's fermentation. You want to make some kimchi, some kraut. You want to know all about that. Great. 
just be putting vegetables and vinegar and going to yeah. town. All right, trucker kids at Travelers Rest State Park. This is birds of prey. Uh, kids get to learn all sorts about all all about the birds of prey. This is a ongoing series of free activities geared towards kids ages five through ten and their families. You can join us every other Saturday to explore the rich cultural and natural history of Western Montana at Travelers Rest. And their theme is birds of prey. Um, hammered heart earrings. Ba uh, bathing uh, beauty beads. Learn how to hammer wire into heart shape uh, that will be linked together with basic wire wraps. In just two hours, you will have a fabulous new pair of heart earrings. And of course, you know, if you're interested in learning more, you go 543-0018. It's $15, you know, for four, you know, for all the supplies that they provide for you, but you don't have to show up with anything, uh, just with your imagination. So uh, 543-0018, and this is hammered heart earrings. Um, MCAT Saturday drop-ins. Every Saturday from 1 to 5, your kid who is age 9 to 13 roughly uh, can come on down to MCAT Saturday Drop-In. It's $10 per kid, $5 for half days, and it is a wonderful experience for kids to create and learn some amazing stuff from MCAT, from stop animation to some cool live action editing video and all sorts of things like that. It's nice to get a good start, and 9 to 13 yeah. is always a good age. Yep. Pickleball. You guys like pickleball? You know pickleball? Yeah, yeah. I used to play that back in high school once or twice. Yeah. So Sorry. Parks and Rec are doing a learn to play pickleball level two oh. um, at Parks and Recreation Currents Aquatic Center at 1.15 Saturday afternoon. This is uh, basically an hour and a half long. It's uh, um, McCormick Park, I believe. That's where Currents is. It's 15.15 Fairview. Um, yeah, and they're also going to meet on March 23rd as well. So if you miss it this week, and you can always check it uh, two weeks from tomorrow. Open figure drawing. Hey, you can drop your kids off of these programs, and you can go to open figure drawing. Uh, they get a nude person to sit up and model for you, and you just draw them. It's great. 2 p.m. at Missoula Art Museum. Every other uh, every other Saturday, they do at the Zootown Arts Community Center, but uh, tomorrow it's going to be at the MAM. You can check it out. Um, usually there is a fee because you're paying a person to expose themselves. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyways. I'd like to take that job. I'll do that job. You want to be naked? Do well. Okay, maybe not necessarily, but they okay. just have to like draw you, right? Yeah. Do you, you want to get paid for being drawn? I think so. Yeah. You can. You can inquire. Sick, dude. Yeah. I get paid to get drawn. Yeah. Sick. I'll do. Oh, I'm gonna look into that. Tell us about your experience if you do do it. Maybe you should do like a video okay. of you doing it. Well, because I'm always like just drawing myself in general and just like drawing my face and whatnot. Nice. So why not let other people do that for yeah. me and get money? Why not? Oh, and also if you're uh, – there's a bunch of drawing things. Painting with a Twist is a new uh, art studio that uh, engages people to come on down and paint with everybody. Nice. And that's at the uh, – it's in the Stevens Center, you know, right next to uh, Central High School. You know, that those places where you have the um, – Vietnam noodle restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Say. Okay. So, and here's the event that I knew that Josh might like. It is a total record swap Missoula Sunday starting at 9 a.m. Uh, Missoula Senior Center is a benefit for the Roxy Theater. Early admission is $5, but it goes from, um, so early admission is $5 for these are the people who want to get on the ground floor right away, but after 10 a.m., it's only a dollar. So you get in for a dollar, you meet with other people's, DJs, raffles, food trucks, and more. Check out Total Record Swap on Facebook and Instagram, but they're going to do it at the Missoula Senior Center, and it's basically just a bunch of people. You can bring your old records and you can see and trade. So it's an open trade oh, okay, for records. Cool. I don't have that many records, honestly. Well, even if you don't have any, you can still go down there and see if they have anything. Maybe you can exchange it for money. It's an exchange. Oh, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, money is exchangeable for things. Yep, because uh, two um, uh, Cutie and the Blowfish are worth uh, one um, Janis Joplin. <laughs> yeah, is that how that works? I don't know. Okay. I just have a bunch of um, like hits from the 50s or something. I have like this whole book collection of 10 records, so maybe like I could... Yeah, why not? I, I, I got a whole bunch of old records from uh, that I inherited with the old stereo slash 8-track player from my family. Nice. I have 8-track. It's a funk machine, um, and it's pretty lit, if I could say so myself. Yeah. Yeah, anyways. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I got to see that player. <laughs> You, you okay? Yeah, totally. Yeah, bring it yeah. by sometime. The the player is a big stereo that's about eighty pounds. Bring it by sometime. <laughs> Yo, what's up? Yeah. Just put it on your <laughs> <shoulder. laughs> I just got a um, a boombox myself. Nice. But it just plays tape. So. 
Yeah. They were chords. Uh, do you guys notice about that? Uh, well, the big thing now is that uh, people are basically down converting a lot of those big movies now to VHS to resale. Oh, really? And that's like a big thing. People are spending like fifteen, twenty dollars for like these big movies for just generic VHS tape conversions. Nice. That's. A, that's I know a it's racket. very lucrative for people selling the tapes, but yeah. the people buying them are complete morons get for that, buying them. Get that nostalgia money. Yep. I'm, I might do that. Yeah, know? nostalgia money. Um, I, I don't know because you, you I think you might have to get approval because you'd have to pay for the rights to put it on a tape because yeah. if you're making money off yeah. of other person's uh, property, that's uh, very that's uh, that's plagiarism. F- yeah. It's called fraud. Fraud. Frog. Yeah. yeah, fraud. Fraud. So as long as they're getting rights to make VHS tapes, yeah. I think that's pretty uh, sick business. Yeah, that, I mean that's the and that's the constant thing. Like people are just like, well, I gave people credit for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. that's not the point. You're making money off of other people's ideas. Stop it. Yeah, a lot of people <laughs> do that these days. Yeah, that's YouTube. That's YouTube life. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it really is. It's mostly just like taking what already exists and just kind of making fun of it or. Uh, commenting on it. It's mostly just reviewing. It, that's that's basically yeah. what YouTube is now. Yeah. It's a review station. Anyways, you can watch me on YouTube. All you got to do is watch Wake Up Missoula. <laughs> uh, yeah. If you Google Wake Up Missoula, you'll find or th- dude this. Just draw. Yep, Dude, I Just Drew. Drew. Another show that I produce here as well, but next week I'll be going over to Potomac to uh, visit Ted Hughes and his art sculptures with uh, Look Before You Speak, a show that I produce here as well with our uh, former curator at the Missoula Art Museum, Steve Glukert. So look for Look Before You Speak. It is the fourth season of the show. We usually do 12 episode seasons, and it's a fun show to do. You guys can check it out anytime. Uh, All you gotta do is go to MCAT.org. All right, I'm done, but do you wanna uh, wrap up the show for us? Oh, yeah, I'll play it so, out. All right. So for I'll Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp, and Josh Cook, take it away. Mm-hmm.